We need to strive to describe our personal knowledge and experience if we are going to propose an avenue to it. Or, at the very least, we need to earnestly engage in a substantial effort to describe what our experience has meant to us, even if our memory is subject to gaps, even when our interpretation of what has happened bleeds into a social framework that suggestively determines the time and space that allows us the opportunity to interpret. The glamour that is the glitz, and a naive enchantment with nostalgia and a past that likely never existed except as a collective figment of a group imagination I was not a member of. Nevertheless, there is evidence of a time when proportion was perceived differently than I know it today, and the scale of objects within that proportion is discussed with earnestness by myself and others. It is almost magical to think of a time when these artifacts were constructed. The predominance of yellow in the first image is offset by the paleness of the blue in the second. There is a play on form between the two images. The first image suggests an openness that is contrasted by the closed nature of the structure in the second image. There is a hint of yellow accenting decay that does not exist in the first image. Guidance as an ongoing construction and due to this volatility I am often immersed in complications that are outside my understanding. Simple affairs become transformed into complex undertakings that are illusory and incoherent. Conversely, the complex mutates to basic expressions that are concrete, exact. This materializes without invitation. The hood of the first image provides a subtle palette that bleeds color into the second image. There are traces of pale blue darkened in the pattern of the second image, yet the hues of red and brown control the blue. Begin as all things begin, and here is exactly an announcement of origin that signifies a departure from its moment of inception, meaning ascribed to a distance between what was and what has become, and maybe, just maybe, what will be. The peril here, if there is a more apt term to describe this circumstance than let it be, is to overlook this process, to withdraw from its recognition, to abandon its archaeology. This presentation seeks to address this process, to engage its recognition, to retain its archaeology. Both geometry and absolution, like when a common object is transformed to something more extraordinary. A little thing maybe, but then again, I am little as well. Surely the momentous can be suggestive of a multitude of little moments adding themselves until the sheer weight of it all becomes larger than the sum of its parts. Geometry always dissuaded me from wanting to accept its offering as proof. I kept seeing all of those small things, kept insisting that the formula to solve it was only proof that a generalization could erase the contributions of so many. The second image introduces green at the expense of the first image's design. The two images are not mutually distinct. The color of the spaces found in between the pattern of the first image promote the ascension of the figure in the second image. The dragon is myth, a valiant statement, one derived from fantasy and placed within these borders. Never a threat, but more an assurance. For me, it is a representation of what is possible. This for me is not about the fanciful, it is about what could be, what can be strived for. The rusty red from the first image is picked up in the roof of the second, and somehow this lends to a transference of green from the image to image. Both images are framed, the first with bristles, and the second with isolation. And how I came to that knowledge is often not accurately reflected in text, and this can be especially challenging when during the course of my institutional education one text is prized over another and in that institutional valuation rests a very real risk of losing the knowledge I have of myself to an identity that is thrust upon me. As a symbol I find the lighthouse to be an example of benevolence. There is a practicality to its creation people were disposed to be cruel, then the lighthouse would not exist, as that cruelty would be indulged in by the prospect of others perilously encountering death outside the knowledge of a privileged few. 
there is something to be said for the construction of a structure that serves no other purpose than to guide. A different method to confer isolation, with both images sharing white at the center. The green from the second image is accessible because of the green in the first image, and the hue of each distinct in its application. The residue of my existence is like the residue of everyone else. We all end up the same. The assigning of value, both in a contemporary context and in a historical one, is arbitrary and unforgiving. I've come to a tacit understanding of the relative nature of being. It is through this consent that I find myself to be most human. There is a trace of leftover sand in the tone of the marble at the bottom part of the image, and it is this trace that assists in the transition from the first to the second. The white and green of the empty pack of cigarettes is ourselves through the representation. One problem of being trained to read this way, or, more correctly, of learning to read this way over many years of academic study, is that we can adopt uncritically similar patterns of writing. Glory that is color, and I am captive within it. Without a favorite, I'd gladly have them all. I distinctly recall coloring books as a boy. I was shaped by that sincerity as much as I've been shaped by anything. I've found salvation in color, and my perception of the world would be hollow without color. I would be less without color. I am less without color. Blue controls the transition of these images, and there is much here that suggests activity. The tiles in the first image are text-like, and balance the letters in the second image so that they are tile-like. The first image is framed and pushed to the background. In my experience, the warning has always been two-thirds the size of the dream. I have reluctantly heeded too many of those warnings. The only thing that might prevent such an inglorious repetition would be some sort of salvation, but I'm not religious and would rather be a part of this imperfect expression than converted by the mannerisms of delusion. I encounter perfection only through these exercises of imperfection. Shades of white are explored in the transition of one image to the other. The contrast provided by the first image is essential to the transition to the second as it bestows a position that would otherwise be vague. There is an active tranquility present in this transition. That effect is only possible because of the vacancy. Epistemological dissection of self through an ontological excavation of identity and acknowledges the hardship encountered by an accurate representation of such data. I believe in nymphs. I believe in the cold, but also recognize that there are moments when things become frigid. I believe in seduction because I have been seduced. I believe that the sun will come out tomorrow, but not because science has proved it, because I've heard it in a song. I believe that it is very important to believe. I believe that the world is both supernatural and horrible. The space here is inverted with the snow of the first image transposed with the sky of the second image. The color of the brick in the first image can be found in the second image where the earth meets the sky. I find the horizon to be beautiful. I also find myself in that almost imperceptible space where the one part meets the other part, but I've never been fond of it being referred to as a line. The line seems to dictate a sharp edge, and I've found that there are very few horizons that I've seen that fit that description. There are jagged edges, smooth edges, arced edges, and all of them have nooks and crannies. The imaginary was the alibi of the real, in a world dominated by the reality principle. Today, it is the real that has become the